Well, if you read much of a man called C.S. Lewis, sometimes his statements make us stop and think. And one of the statements that I was reading today is, the real problem is not why some pious, humble, believing people suffer, but why some do not. Well, that really caught my attention, because we're always asking, why do the righteous suffer? We're always looking for the answer, you know, why, Lord? Anytime a little suffering or discomfort of any kind comes our way, well, immediately we want God to explain just why we're having to go through this uh, time of affliction or sickness. Every week we get prayer requests from people whose loved ones are suffering in some way or another, and we want God to just answer our prayer and, you know, make it a perfect world for them, take away the pain and the suffering. Well, I've got news for you. Because of the curse of sin, we live in a broken world. We live in a world where pain and suffering is uh, something that we can expect. Now, I know that God created a, a world that was to be a utopia on earth. In man, because of his disobedience to God, it brought the curse of sin. And uh, I don't think that uh, we need to just accept it and say, well, this is God's will that I just hurt and suffer all the time. But uh, neither do we need to question it and wonder why we have pain and suffering. As uh, someone that lived with a lady that has intense discomfort and pain uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, a good godly woman, very pious, very godly, very devoted to God, uh, loving to her family, and I wonder why Carol suffers the way she does. We prayed now for about seven years that God would, uh, you know, take away the pain and ease the suffering, and it seemed like that uh, it hasn't happened. Well, I can't explain that. I wish I had the explanation of why uh, you are suffering or why your family is going through a time of sickness and suffering. But I can tell you this, that the Bible says that in this world we're going to have much tribulation. And, uh, you know, there's just a whole lot that that word tribulation covers. I think that it covers uh, uh, pain. I think it covers suffering. I think it covers affliction and adversity of all kind. In this world, you're going to have all kinds of troubles. And there are physical problems and mental problems, emotional problems. We have financial problems sometime as unforeseen circumstances take away the money and wreck the budget and things that we just don't understand. And I wish that I had the answer. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of books. Why do the godly suffer? Why do good people suffer? Now, why does God permit so much suffering in the world today? And especially of those uh, pious, holy people, people that are strong believers in God and have a strong faith. Why is it that God permits them to suffer? Well, I don't have the answers, but I do know that uh, Job went through more adversity and affliction than any of us ever will. But he said, when I am tried, I shall come forth as gold. And sometimes God allows it, you know, to kind of refine us and to purge the impurities from our life. And I believe that God allows it sometimes that he may show himself strong on our behalf. What a testimony. If people are going through suffering, that they can maintain the victory, that they can maintain a glow on their face and, and a good attitude in life testifies to the faithfulness of God in providing a grace that will sustain us amid all the tribulation of life. So don't wonder why people suffer. Wonder why some people don't suffer. Guarantee you their time is probably coming if it hasn't already yet because few of us are going to get through the world without some kind of discomfort or pain or trials or tribulation but God is faithful and he'll be with us through it all Heavenly Father we know that you promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us regardless of where our pathway of life may take us and what it may entail help us to not question the goodness of the Lord when we suffer 
but may it create a stronger faith and a trust in you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Pastor Hayton here. I've enjoyed sharing the Lord Light's devotional again. And I'll see you tomorrow here on the Lower Lights Devotional. Goodbye now.